The first point is, it is very important that whenever we have a difference between ourselves as parents, don't ever allow your children to witness the argument between the two. Never. If you have to say something to your wife, or if a wife has to say something to the husband that is a little bit heavy, a little bit hard, do it after the doors are closed and locked in your own room when nobody and none of your children are watching. I'd like to commence with an incident that occurred at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu where there was an old man. He came forth complaining about his child. And he said, O oh, Amir al -Mu'mineen, I have a child who is disobedient, I have a child who does this, I have a child who does that, and he said a whole list of things. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu listened to the old man and then called the boy and tried to advise him, saying, your father is complaining about you and you need to fulfill the rights of your father. So the young boy says, can I ask a question? And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, yes, you can ask a question. What is it? He says, do I not have any rights? What are my rights? I'd like to know that. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu explained to the young boy what his rights were. The first right that the child has is for the parent to select a good spouse. Subhanallah. So before the child ever came into existence, it was already the right of your unborn children who were not even mentioned that you had chosen a decent mother for them. So it is the right of our children that we married somebody decent. One of the reasons is, obviously, when you have married someone decent, it becomes much easier for the child to then be brought up in a decent fashion, in a decent manner. Whereas when marriage was only for beauty, or it was only for wealth, or it was for the wrong reasons, for example, sometimes we can ask ourselves, what do you expect from this? If, for example, a man has married a woman who doesn't even know how to speak, who swears and shouts, then what type of behavior would that man expect his children to have? In order to remedy this, in the Sharia, we are taught that it is the right of your unborn children. Even prior to your marriage, it is the right of those who will be born to you if you ever do have children, that you select a good spouse. And this is not only for men, but even for women. In a nutshell, ask yourself, is this person fit to be the mother of my children? Is this person fit to be the father of my children? We don't need to go for the next most beautiful woman. But we rather go for a person who is beautiful from inside. And in the case of a female, is this person fit to be the father of my children when she is selecting or she is deciding whether or not to marry someone? So the fact that we have married correctly is already part and parcel of the right of the unborn child being fulfilled that is of utmost importance the second issue mentioned by Umar ibn al-Khattab he says it was the right of your father to give you a good name to name you with a brilliant name 
these good names obviously we have names that have a good meaning to the degree that you would be proud to call your child with that name is it that we still want to choose names that just sound western some people have that notion where they think that I'd rather name the child something which will sound more western and they will debate with you why can't I name the child this and that the reality is it's the child's right that you choose a good name because at that age the child has no understanding you don't want the child to grow up cursing you that you know the name I've got is very bad so that is the second right that was mentioned and the third right is and Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu is telling this little boy that as you grew up the first things to be taught to you should have been the Quran the word of the creator who created you so the young boy looks and says you know Umar ibn al-Khattab you are Amirul Mu'mineen I'd like to tell you my father has not fulfilled any any of these rights of mine and he only stopped at these three imagine if he had to go on and on he says firstly he married someone off the street who had a very bad record may Allah protect us secondly he gave me such a terrible name and up to now I don't even know what the Quran is all about so then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu diverted the admonition to the father saying you are coming to complain about your child you are the one who has not even fulfilled any of the rights of the child and you are coming to say my child is disobedient and my child is this and my child is that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us so I've used this incident as a prelude to the talk every aspect of my life and your lives is covered in Islam and we are taught that a strong relation between the spouses will result in a positive upbringing of the children if the mother and the father the two of them get on well naturally the children will be having a more holistic upbringing that is something we need to understand it is taught to us in the Sharia ah. and that is why and I'm going to start mentioning the points that I'd like to talk about this evening one by one the first point is it is very important that whenever we have a difference between ourselves as parents don't ever allow your children to witness the argument between the two never if you have to say something to your wife or if a wife has to say something to the husband that is a little bit heavy a little bit hard do it after the doors are closed and locked in your own room when nobody and none of your children are watching because if you are to vent your frustrations in the presence of your child you are doing a disservice to those children they will grow up thinking that that is normal arguments are normal swearing is normal getting angry is normal and then as they grow up if they don't get angry and if they don't swear and shout then what do you expect them to do do you expect them to suddenly know that you are not supposed to do this when every day they have been watching their own parents doing the same thing that is a very valid point and we need to consider it contemplate because if we take a careful look at the problems that we are facing now across the globe many parents are not fit to be parents really many people have married and they still have a lot of rectification and suddenly they have children they themselves who need to guide the children need guidance that is where, what we are faced with nowadays you have parents who have suddenly become parents but they don't know what parenthood is all about and in order to address this we need to go a little bit deeper to resolve the matters and to between the children and the parents and to try and give the children the best of upbringings we need to know 
that the husband and wife themselves need to have a sense of responsibility and that sense of maturity and responsibility will only come when you are disciplined when you are strict on yourself so many times you have young boys I'm not so sure of the girls but I can talk for the boys who have their friends they sit with their friends up to 12 at night and 2 in the morning then a few years later they get married and when they get married they still find themselves making the same time for their friends that is prohibited how can a person who has now taken somebody's daughter still give preference to his friends over his own wife and this is a sickness that many people are guilty of the time that you spend with your spouse is an act of worship in Islam the time that you spend with your family members is an act of worship in Islam so many people give preference to their businesses over their family members many people just sit and give preference to a newspaper over their family members the man comes home from work he is tired he does not speak to anyone he sits down he wants to eat his food he has a temper and next thing he is busy reading the paper or he literally plants himself in front of the television and he is watching television until late hours then he switches it off and goes to sleep he hasn't spoken to his wife he hasn't spoken to his children if any one of us here are guilty of that today is the day you are being told directly that that is a major sin how can you give preference to a television over real people another problem is also the internet many people give preference to the internet and spend hours every day until 2 and 3 in the morning laughing and joking with a screen and I want to give you an example of a very good friend of mine one of my best friends very very highly educated I told him you know tell me what has Allah done with you meaning you know what has happened in your life he tells me brother I gave up the internet I said that doesn't make sense so I said, what do you mean? He said, that is the biggest single achievement of my life. I was confused. This was a few years back. Now he told me he became a doctor. He actually became a psychiatrist later. He specialized. He told me, you know what happened to me? I was married and I was addicted to the internet. And I was sitting with the internet every day, every single day for six to seven hours. And I became a person whose social life was the net all my friends were, were on the internet I ate and mostly I even asked for the plate of food to come in front of the screen and he says I lost my wife in the sense that she left him because if you are not going to give due attention to your wife who do you want her to get that from that's a question many people are guilty of not spending lighter moments even with their own wives where do they want that wife to go and get that from because so many women are suffering in silence it's a fact of life they are too embarrassed to mention what is going on and that is the beginning of the problem imagine the children that come out of such a relationship what type of a relation will there be between parent and child when the parent parent relation is non-existent so many people are guilty of not understanding that they have taken someone's daughter with the name of Allah that do you know that 90% of your problems are caused by the tongue so Allah is saying watch out be careful how you use that tongue of yours especially in marriage the question I have how many of us utter words to make our spouses feel good how many of us utter words to put a smile on the faces of our spouses on a daily basis I think a lot of us are guilty of never doing that or doing it very little every single day it would be an act of worship 
for myself and yourselves to say a few words to make your spouse smile both male and female if we don't do that we will have a hollow society outwardly everything seems to be okay inside nothing is okay and people are suffering in silence do you know that you need to praise your spouse on their faces even if you are telling a lie sometimes what happens is the food is prepared it takes hours to prepare and then a lot of men have a sickness where not only do we forget to utter words of appreciation but we will only pick on what is wrong with the food so what you need to do is and what I need to do is appreciate it by saying you know the food is so lovely really it's very good even if you are telling a little bit of a lie and my dear mothers and sisters don't worry when your husbands are telling you that it will be true it won't be a lie how many of us have told our wives or our husbands you are looking very beautiful today you are looking very handsome today a lot of us are guilty of thinking that in Islam you're not even allowed to say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to tell that to his wives regularly he used to explain to them and express to them with greatest passion how beautiful they were looking subhanallah are you waiting for the neighbor to come and tell that to your wife and it happens and sometimes the neighbor might say it in your presence what an embarrassment that is now un-islamic but that statement will have an impact on this woman if it's the first time she's hearing that or if she hasn't heard it in a long long time but if you utter it every day then even if the, the most handsome of princes comes and tells her how beautiful she is looking it won't have an impact on her because she hears that word every day from you this is what enhances the relationship do you know mostly what happens in our homes the women folk do not go to work the men go to work this poor woman who is a new bride sometimes or she's a wife who's been there for many years she's got a child from the time you leave to work she is busy thinking about you and she is trying to prepare a meal for you she is uh, you know looking after the child or the children for example and she is looking forward to you coming when you come you know she she has certain plans maybe in place she wants to smile at you and maybe have a nice big hug as soon as you enter and so on but sometimes when we enter the homes as men we give them such a dirty look that their whole mountain comes crumbling why because we made a very big mistake we came in with the wrong attitude she has been sitting alone waiting all day for you to come home so that she can share a moment or two with you and you come home and you share those moments with the television and many people have this habit they sit and watch the news and that's it and I know that there are people in here who must be thinking this man is addressing me believe me this is a common problem across the globe and we are here as ulama to help people identify and diagnose the problems the divorce rates are so high because people don't know what marriage is all about when you marry you need to stop giving your friends preference you know we had a young boy who married and I happened to talk to him and I even gave a lecture at his nikah and I had said there that we must give preference to our wives over our friends he decided that he is going to adopt it and he sidelined a lot of his friends they began to tell him you're a chicken you're you know you don't wear the pants you know and so on you know you'd rather call her mister and you should call yourself missus so he came to me I told him I said listen brother tell them that I don't mind you calling me a chicken or a frog so long as I'm happy in my marriage because the day my marriage doesn't work you are not going to come and resolve the matter for me but I will not lose you as friends if you were true friends and if you are true friends you will send the married man home may Allah protect us all so this solid relationship 
that is there or supposed to be there between the spouses is what will result then in a solid upbringing of the children because they will not get differing views and opinions. They will not be confused when a child sees different things from the mother, different things from the father and the child sees opposing views and conflict between the two, the child is confused and after that what happens is that child then finds comfort outside the house because in the house there is chaos in the house there is confusion so the child then wants to find comfort at school or with some friends especially the female child sometimes very silent very emotional but at the same time they may then be caught unaware may Allah protect us and that brings me to another point when we have a child in the house this is for those men who are married who have children and don't worry the women folk your turn is coming you know a lot of the men must be thinking this man is blasting us a lot of people are guilty of not understanding what is meant by pregnancy and what is meant by bearing a child a lot of men don't understand that and what type of difficulties a woman goes through in order to bear your child and immediately after birth we show disinterest in that same female. Why? Because she's got a little bit of fat now, a little bit of flab on her belly, for example. She's got three or four more stretch marks there and she probably might not get back into exactly the shape she was. It's a fact. So now what happens, a lot of men then, after the first child or two, their eyes begin to wander here and there. And they start saying, oh, this woman is so pretty. Why are you hurting the feelings of your own wife? It is haram in Islam to praise another woman in the presence of your own spouse, especially speaking about her figure. We are not even meant to be looking in that direction. These are matters that need to be spoken about. And other matters that occur which create confusion for the children is the relationship we have with our in-laws. When we have a healthy relationship with our in-laws, then naturally the children will have a healthy relationship with us as well. But when there is chaos and confusion, let me inform you in Islam, once a couple are married, you don't interfere with their decisions, even if it is your son or your daughter. You can try and suggest something to them, but it is wrong for you to make decisions for them. And this message is for parents who have children who are married. Let them live their lives. Let them make their decisions. When you were young, you made your decisions. Now it's their turn to make their decisions. Their children's upbringing is their business, not yours. Now they are married. They need to start a life of their own. Many marriages are suffering great turbulence. A lot of them even break because of interference from parents on both sides and it's a fact across the globe this is a problem and we don't understand as Muslims take a look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he never ever interfered he never ever interfered with any of his daughters husbands and he never interfered in their lives not even once I want to give you one true example of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu you know his daughter was Aisha radiallahu anha she was married to the Prophet ﷺ. One day he passed the room of Aisha radiallahu anha. The Prophet ﷺ was there. Aisha radiallahu anha had raised her voice and it was sounded like it was like a discussion with a debate. It sounded like that. And Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he knocked the door. He was allowed to go in. He did not ask questions. You know, most of us, when there is a problem, with our children and their spouses, we side with our children. Some people say, my daughter is right, always, you are wrong. And some people say, my son is right, you are wrong. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu did not ask questions. He didn't even know what was happening. He thought there is a debate going on here. My daughter is being disrespectful. He went in and he admonished her. He admonished her. He admonished her to the degree that she began to weep then he went away few minutes later he was passing the same room and he heard them laughing 
So he knocked the door and he says, Can you allow me to take part in your peace? In the same way you made me take part in your war a few minutes ago. And the Prophet ﷺ began to laugh and he explained to him, Look, there was no problem at all. You overreacted. There was no problem at all. But why I'm mentioning this is, if we are to interfere, it should only be to rectify our side. That's, who, that's the interference. To rectify, to admonish, to be strict. But we cannot begin to make decisions for others. Then there is another problem, and that is the sandwich that a lot of men are put into. Why? Because on one hand you have your parents, and on the other hand you have your wife and your children. Now where to go? Because now there is a discrepancy between the two. Should I listen to my parents or should I listen to my wife? You are now a parent yourself. Your parents have a position which will never ever drop in Islam. They have a very high lofty position. But where they are reasonable, you will listen to what they say. Where they are not reasonable, you will explain to them like a man. To say that, do you know what? Thank you very much. I really appreciate your advice and so on. Even if you don't want to tell them, you, you know, I'm not going to accept what you're saying. Don't say that. But where they are unreasonable, you do not have to take it. Sometimes some people say, look, you know what? My mother comes first because paradise lies under her feet. I agree. But if the paradise is there in the first place, some mothers have hell beneath their feet. May Allah protect us. What this means is, if her life is un-Islamic, what paradise do you want under her feet? She will begin to tell you to do things which are detrimental to your own self. Then you want to use this excuse to continue listening to what she's saying. She will land you in the same place she has landed. You need to give the freedom to those who are married to live their lives according to what they feel is correct on condition that it is within the Islamic limits. The minute they decide we don't want to read Salah, you tackle them. The minute they decide we don't want to dress Islamically, you tackle them. You can interfere. The minute they decide we don't want to read the Quran and the Sunnah, you tackle them. You can interfere. But whether or not they want to eat out or in is not your business. They go out, let them go. Be happy for them. If they decide we want to go for on a holiday to Hawaii, let them go on holiday. Be happy for them. Another point is that whenever we speak, we should speak with utmost respect to our spouses and make sure the children watch that and they see that my father speaks very well to my mother and my mother addresses my father with a lot of respect. The child will learn respect automatically because that is what they've been watching every day. If you read your salah on a daily basis, the child will automatically come up and want to read Salah at the age of one and two and will go into the posture of Sajda without anyone saying anything. I'm sure you have seen that happening. If you dress properly and appropriately, your children will dress appropriately. A woman who wants to wear clothing that is unacceptable, for example, then she makes dua to Allah, Ya Allah, keep my children modest. She is being foolish. Because she needs to be the example of her own children. Parents need to be the role models of their own children. And we should remember that when we do something, our children will do the same to us. How you treat your parents, so your children shall treat you. And if you don't want it to come back, engage in tawbah, repent and mend your ways here and now, it won't come back. Now if we move on to the, the relationship of the children themselves within each other, it is very important that the children themselves are made to understand that they are equal. Favoritism of one child is a very big crime, totally prohibited, completely haram. Many people are guilty of it. Many children feel that my brother or my sister is much more loved by my parents than myself. Many children feel that. That feeling is a dangerous feeling. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you are going to give one sweet to one child and you have 10, you need to give all of them. You are not allowed to favor one child over the others. Never. So much so that I have read certain books which say that when you are naming your children, try to keep similar names so none of your children must think my name is so small and short and look at my brother's got such a wonderful name. Allahu Akbar. That is justice and equality when it comes to your children, even from naming them. The child might grow up thinking, what did my father do? Even after you are dead, he might curse you. Another point is the issue of communication between the parents and the children. Many times the parents don't realize that the world is changing. So the type of problems faced by the new generation will be different. They might come to you with something very absurd. Deal with it correctly. Nowadays, in a lot of the parts of the globe, communication is so sophisticated that by the time a girl gets to 16, she's got someone in mind. And by the time a boy gets to a certain age, he's got someone in mind. If your communication with your child is good, they will keep you up to date with what they are thinking and what they are doing. But if your communication is bad, it will come to you as a shock and that child may elope. They may run away from you because they want to get to a person whom they love and love is blind. So rather from the very beginning, educate your children about marriage that look, don't be deceived by people. When you want to marry, these are the qualities you look for. And this is the type of spouse you need. The mother of your children, this is what you need. And this is what needs to happen and so on. And please, if there is anyone you ever show an interest in before it is too late, please, can you talk to me and we will help you. We want goodness for you. We don't want evil for you. It is time we open the doors of that type of communication with our children. Because the world is changing. I have come across cases where people tell me that I am ready to sacrifice my parents, but I'm not going to sacrifice this girl. And when you talk to the parents, they say, no way, it's over my dead body. So I tell them, just pretend to be dead for a while and it will happen. <laughs> there is lack of communication in most homes because even the husband and the wife don't communicate. How are we going to communicate with the children? Then. The education of your child is something extremely important. What type of schools do you send your child to? There are two environments inside the house and outside the house. Nowadays, the environment outside the house has a bigger impact upon an individual than the environment inside. The friends have a bigger impact than the parents. So what the parents should do is try and help the child choose friends by sending them to schools where there are decent people. So you might have given them a very good upbringing, but you never took an interest in the friends of your children. How do they select friends? Have we ever spoken to them about that? Where we send our children plays a big role in determining what type of a child that child will be. Also, what is of prime importance is when we develop a link with the ulama, naturally our children will incline towards the scholars. Also, we need to strike a balance between secular education and Islamic education. The secular education will help a child for a few years, but the Islamic education will take the child through life and beyond life after death. So that is why the child who has no religious knowledge will curse his or her parents because they taught me something that was not even going to help me. And if it did, it was going to help me for a short while. But they never told me about this meeting of ours. They never told me that I would get into the grave. I didn't know how to read Quran. I didn't know anything. I didn't understand the message of Allah and his messenger. So the link you have with the scholars of deen, inshallah, will open the doors of contentment within your home.
Ya Allah, we ask you to have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Forgive our shortcomings. We are human beings, Ya Allah. We err, we make mistakes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us. Grant us steadfastness. Keep us away from shaitan and keep shaitan away from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us good health, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who are sick and ill in any way, Ya Allah, grant them cure, Ya Allah. Those who have passed away, have mercy on them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us exemplary parents, Ya Allah. Protect our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us all forms of goodness, Ya Allah. Anta al-musta'an alayka al-balaq wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alayhi al-azim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-musalina wa alhamdulillah.